Don't just take it at face value. Test it out and see whether it's true. Hey, you're back. I'm back. So you never answered my question. What question? How far down the rabbit hole? Do you want to go? Ponder that for a while. My name is David Albert. Um, I uh, got a PhD in theoretical physics. I studied biochemistry at Rutgers University and then went to chiropractic college at Life University in Atlanta, Georgia. My postgraduate training is in anatomy and physiology, neurochemistry, neurophysiology, and genetics. I study quantum physics, I sometimes teach it, I've written a book on quantum physics and many books explicating the meaning of quantum physics. After my PhD from Harvard, I went to CERN, a European laboratory for particle research, and then joined faculty at Stanford. And my work there has been the development of unified quantum field theories. I have about a hundred publications in this area, but perhaps I'm best known for the discovery of supersymmetric flipped SU5 grand unified field theory. I make my living as an anesthesiologist and every day as I put my patients to sleep I kind of wonder where they go and why they're there in the first place and that's one of the reasons that attracted me to anesthesia and the study of consciousness. My name is Michal Ledwith and for most of my life I was a professor of theology. I'm Dr. Daniel Monti. I'm a physician with specialty training in psychiatry and human behavior. I'm on the full-time faculty at the Jefferson Medical College. I actually got very interested in studying this whole topic of the brain and spirituality because it had to do with a lot of the questions that I was asking ever since I was a child about reality and how we understood truth and what was real. And as I grew up and as I realized that while spirituality was, in some senses, a very important part of trying to find those answers, science also was a very crucial part. And I was ultimately looking for some way of bringing those two forces together. Well, my name is Candace Pert, and I'm a professor at Georgetown in the medical school. Here we are actually filming great thinkers. Everyone in this room is a great thinker. Now that we got them thinking, that's always a trick, isn't it? I should make it clear that I'm a, I'm a, uh, a graduate student in physics. I'm not a full-fledged theoretical physicist yet. Uh, but if fortune smiles on me and I continue to work like a dog on my problem sets and exams and whatnot, eventually what I hope to do with this is, is to apply uh, fundamental quantum theory to quantum information processing. So I decided, well, if I gave up being department chairman, and if I gave up all my professional committees, and I gave up all my government committees, I would have a block of time that I could put to work. Of course, I give up all my power positions, but you have to sacrifice something. I had to keep my day job because my family needed to be fed.
I presume that you're asking me how scientists can sound this wacko because I must be sounding wacko. <laughs> it's really an interesting question. If you study science long enough and seriously enough and dig deeply enough, if you don't come out feeling wacko about it, you haven't understood a thing.